Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. You're surrounded now. Give yourselves up. There's no way to escape. Come on out. Be sensible. Why make your situation worse? Surrender. Give me a car, and I'll blow this thing, and fast! Think of the lives we're endangering. I see that. You would like to avoid it. You hate to see this happening. If you risk any lives, they're your own. I admire your bravery, but I can't intervene. I'm growing less and less satisfied with you two. As often as your missions are successful, the net results include two or three cadavers butchered beyond recognition. There's a plan to rob a jewelry shop in Piazza Bologna tomorrow. A pair of well-known professionals. Ciao, rookies. In one hour, I bag Pasquini. We'll come help you. We're off duty. Roberto Pasquini, alias Bibi. Rick Coney, in one hour, is splitting your skull. Whether you push it or stuff yourself with heroin, I don't give a damn. If I see you picking up stakes in one of my gambling joints, I'll pay you. But you go tell the police and you don't get no more. talk about a special squad? I know quite a bit about that. For example, I know that Rick Conte you had filled full of lead was on the special squad. From now on, I'm restricting you. You're assigned exclusively to Pasquini. Where's Bibi? He's screwing your mother. <laughs> Lena, you're wrong. He's not screwing my mother. When I walk this morning, my thoughts were just for you. They work as a pair. I know they were the same pair who hit the car park. You've got to spot them. tested for the special squad. Every test revealed that your traits are criminal. But that's what you need to fight crime. Yeah. What I can't explain is why you two, with your characteristics, applied for the police at all.
and welcome back. So you just heard the trailer for this feature movie review of this 88 Films Italian collection review series looking at disc number 11. This is Live Like a Cop, Die Like a Man, directed by Ruggiero Diodato, the man behind the Cannibal Holocaust. The movie stars Mark Perel, Ray Lovelock, Alf- Aldolfo Selly, um, and the, the blurb on the 88 Films website page says before he was worshipped as an auteur of video nasty violence the notorious Ruggiero Diodato creator of Han- a Cannibal Holocaust and the house on the edge of the park helmed perhaps his most popular pot boiler live like a cop Die Like a Man, an edgy, exciting and extravagantly plotted police thriller. This masterpiece of high-octane action opens with a road-ripping race around Rome that makes the French connection look positively lightweight in comparison. Inspired by the vigilante violence of Dirty Harry, Diodanto's crowning crime shocker stars the heavyweight pair of Ray Lovelock of The Living Dead at Manchester Mark and Mark Perel of Filchie's The Psychic. As two police investigators who are not above the law uh, and take it into their own hands, unleashing uncut and uncensored by 88 films, this breathtaking Babes and Bullets blockbuster is an essential acquisition for Diodato Files and lovers of classic Italian genre cinema alike. Oh, that was a bit wordy, wasn't it? Uh, plenty of alliteration, so I love it, obviously. Um, the DVD itself doesn't contain that much in the way of extras. Very light on that. Um, quite a lot of the collection seems to be that way, and whilst I'm not shunning it, it's great to have it on, you know, shiny... HD Master, a movie like this, you know, should exist in that sort of environment for collectors. I do feel at times 88 films push out a ton of titles with maybe not the same sort of care and attention to the extras as other distributors, no names shall be mentioned, but I think you can read between the lines of what I'm saying. This one comes with a brand new HD Master, uncompressed LPCM English soundtrack, an uncompressed LPCM Italian soundtrack with English subtitles, a reversible sleeve with the alternative art, and includes a collectible postcard as well. There we go. I think you also get the trailer for the movie as well as one of the special features. Uh, the runtime of this movie, nice and short, this is about an hour and a half, this one it breezes in and when we take into account that they are right in saying that the movie opens with this, the class it is this high octane breathtaking chase scene around Rome, they are not lying, the, legitimately the first 10 minutes of this movie is like a motorbike chase around Rome. Um, and it's kind of cheesy in bits and kind of schlocky in other bits but also there's some great stunt work in here and it is pretty wonderful to see them just go at it. It takes a, a certain set of balls to kick off your movie in this sort of fashion. But yeah, ultimately, Live Like a Cop, uh, Die Like a Man has a, a very paint by numbers, and I don't mean to use that as a negative at all, but a very paint by numbers uh, kind of take on the Italian police subgenre, uh, you know, kind of crime thrillers that they were doing of the era in the 70s. I probably will butcher this, but I believe the official tagline or the official subgenre for this is Poliziotesci, um, which marks a, an entire rung of Italian kind of crime. Pr- pr- can't say that one. Police procedural thrillers, um, which were a staple of the kind of mid to late 70s in particular. It kind of became super popular after the, the massive boom of Jali. So if you imagine like the, the, the Jallo has its heyday from probably circa 1970 when Bird with the Crystal Plumage comes in to about 74, 75 is where it's starting to lose kind of pace and attention. And by then uh, the, the, the kind of police genre um, of movie making had kind of taken the reins up and were immensely popular at the time um, and it's weird the the list of directors that have directed against this particular subgenre is a who's who of phenomenal genre director I mean we're talking about people like uh, Bruno Corbucci uh, Massimo Dallamano um We've got Lucio Fulci, <laughs> he, he did some, Umberto Lenzi, Sergio Martino, uh, Sergio Saloma, 
Um, yeah, just like I like I say, like a who's who, including our good friend here, Ruggiero Diodato. The plot is kind of straightforward. There's nothing really here which I would say is, you know, uh, pushing the envelope or breaking the mould per se. Uh, what we have is two local cops. They're best friends. They live together. They do everything together. They share motorbike rides. Um, and they also kind of skirt dangerously close to the line of which could be considered complete abuse of power. Um, and also... <laughs> Um, a combination of um, mildly sort of homoerotic um, friendship with each other, uh, very much so. It kind of plays into that without being explicit, so it's kind of like a another undertone, as well as being hugely chauvinistic towards women um, in a way which is kind of unfortunate given today's climate, uh, but is very indicative of the the, the kind of the whole Italian movie genre. Uh, scene of the of the seventies in particular, uh, but yeah. So basically, we have these two kind of action thirsty cop heroes um, who are trying to take down um, a local kind of crime boss kingpin sort of guy um, who is at the same time trying to discover the identities of the people uh, responsible for a string of assaults against his particular crime organisation so he's basically trying to find out the, the, the two main heroes in this movie so he can stop them and bring them down and whilst that plot itself seems a bit thin um, somehow Diodato manages to like legitimately about every 10 to 15 minutes in this movie there is a shootout there is cars being set on fire, um, there is a rather racy sex scene. Um, it's like this guy knows that audience attention um, and this particular subgenre demands things to happen all the time at almost equally spaced intervals to keep your attention going because the plot is wafer thin and if we spend too much time scrutinising it then ultimately we're not going to be happy with the outcome so give them the shiny flashy ball thing that's happening on the screen to distract their attention from the very little plot that is actually moving forward in the storyline. The weird thing about this movie is obviously it gets one of those, uh, by today's standards, one of those classic Quentin Tarantino quotes that we'll see pop up in quite a lot of the 88 films, Italian collection, Tarantino himself massive fan of um, this country's output of cinema uh, and as such he'd seen quite a lot of them he is uh, quoted as saying that live like a cop die like a man has one of the greatest names in cinema history and it certainly lives up to its title um, and yeah that's enough to really sell this movie over and over to kind of cinephiles forever uh, because you know everyone loves a bit of Quentin Tarantino for the most part and uh, people will try and spot where the influences in these movies come from and maybe this has been an influence somewhere. Um, th there's a lot of talk also about it being you know kind of linked to the idea of Dirty Harry you know a cop that's prepared to maybe bend the rules to uh, flex them slightly in order to, to get what he wants away from but ostensibly this is a buddy cop movie so the Dirty Harry thing kind of maybe falls back it's like what would happen if maybe Dirty Harry and Starsky and Hutch shared the machine from the fly and um, the output that you would get is basically live like a cop die like a man I had a ton of fun with this movie uh, for the most part like I say gender politics aside as in women do not really have a place in this movie at all it, with a bit of eye candy and um, for, for kind of sexual content. Um, the movie itself is actually quite a bit of fun, are kind of two heroes who have a kind of repressed homosexuality towards each other, are, you know, likeable well enough, two very attractive looking men who are clearly in peak physical condition um, at the time are off doing their bits and bobs here. Um, there is the kind of very cliche convoluted, 
you know, have to go in and speak to the chief scene like every now and again dotted to this movie, you know, you guys are causing too much trouble out there, sort of thing that, that kind of carries on, but for the most part it's handled well. I love the use of the, the kind of practical stunt work in this movie, I think that's something that is a lost art that we can enjoy very much in the 70s, it's just one of these weird time capsules and bubbles for like kind of you're not scared to shove someone on a bike and have them drive down a very busy street. There is a scene in this movie very early on, actually, in that opening chase, where I actually don't know if the person um, in one of the cars is aware that they're filming a movie, in that it looks like our stuntman is kicking the side of a white car to move it out of the way, and it's shot in such a way where it looks like no one knows what's happening. Uh, and it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, they just went out on this street and started shooting a, a kind of chase scene. Um, our cops move, like, into elements which are maybe more into the the Diodato school of, of filmmaking in that there's a couple of scenes here which are very graphic in their violence. Even for the time period, I was quite taken back by what they did. And it kind of really pushes this idea of how far the cops will push to, to get what they want, which might have seemed like a foreign idea until recently when we've heard about a lot of what's been happening in the world with the abuse of police power. And it kind of fits snugly back into that. I think the score for the movie is great. Um, it kind of flows along. I think Ray Lovelock himself has the theme song to the movie, which I might actually close this episode out with because it's an interesting little day, but um, he, he does that. But the, the general overall score for it is great. Uh, Cinematography is lovely. I mean, you're, you're playing in Rome here, um, and as a result, you have some wonderful architecture to play with. Um, some of the set pieces for the, the, the bigger scenes, bigger shootouts and stuff are done really, really well. Like I say, I'm, I'm slightly uncomfortable with some of the gender politics in here uh, and that it's it's of an era and that era is kind of kind of not cool nowadays. Uh, but you just have to understand that it was a different time and that's just the way cinema is and we can't shun and forego watching all that stuff because if you do, you'd, ha you'd lose decades of cinema based on the back of that and some of the dialogue is maybe a bit um, playful but in a way where that playfulness feels at the detriment to some of the female characters which is unfortunate for sure our two central leads are brilliant they're they're great i believe that they're friends um all quirks aside uh, i think it's novel that they take turns in paying their cleaner uh, is it your month or is it my month and um yeah, then proceed to insinuate to said cleaner that maybe they had sex with her niece, which does not go down well. Um, but yeah, I think what you get in the movie is it's fast paced. It goes in a, like a breeze. Um, an hour and a half is not long for a movie anyway, but when you have action sequences every 10 to 15 minutes um, of some description, when it, whether it's sexual um, or, or you know violence based, um, there, there's they're spaced out really well in this movie that as a result there's never any time to really get kind of rest back into well you know this is kind of generic it's always moving it's always pushing the pace um the ending's kind of nuts um i'll not spoil it for anyone that has not seen the ending it kind of just happens and then we're kind of done um and the kind of build up for the kingpin i found fun uh, in a way which kind of tickled me a little bit and that I was watching it going really is that what we're doing now um, but yeah I think it's it's a completely harmless little movie I don't think it's one of the best of the, the, the kind of crime thriller Italian subgenre at all um, but it's by nowhere near the worst. It has a nice visual eye, and that obviously comes from Diodato. It gets into a bit of exploitation in terms of the violence, which is certainly Diodato's wheelhouse. It's the only one that he did within the genre. Um, you know, after this one, I think he moves on and does Jungle Holocaust, and this is him really moving at pace towards the release of Cannibal Holocaust, which comes like two or three movies after this one, and then really does set him up as one of the most controversial film directors of all time so he's still kind of uh, 
kind of turning through the mill here, experimenting with different things, very much a you know a working director taking jobs as and when they come up. Um, and he could have slummed it in this movie. I kind of like that he doesn't, uh, and at least tries to put something in there. Like I say, overall, it's not revolutionary. It's not groundbreaking, and it's certainly not the sort of movie where I would be saying, "Oh, you want to check out uh, some of this." Uh, Satoshi sort of movies um, that's great this one's at the top of the list it's probably not it's somewhere at the middle of the bottom but certainly for the Diodato files as the 88 films calls them um, this is one you should check out it's always interesting to see what controversial directors did either on the run up before or after a movie and how that impacts what they do certainly all the tools and mechanisms are here for great filmmaking which he takes on and uses to the next level when he does Cannibal Holocaust a movie which I'm loath to say I love because of the once again the subject matter and the content of the movie but it's a movie that I think is hugely important and influential um, in, in the horror genre uh, as well as the cannibal genre as well so there we go uh, if I had to grade this one as always I do using the old school Netflix grades one is hated it two is didn't like it three is liked it four is really liked it and five is loved it i would comfortably say comfortably say that this would get a 3.5 yeah it's somewhere between liked it and really liked it i think it's a ton of fun you can watch it it's an easy easy watch um it just it is lacking maybe a bit more of the the substance that you get with other movies within the same genre so there we go. That was Disc 11. I live like a cop, die like a man.